Okay, so thinking about a five-year research plan, I like to think about it as your major to-do list, right? Is what you're going to accomplish in five years. So start thinking, what is going to be on my to-do list? Um, and you can also think about it, okay, I have research. I got to do research. Maybe think about this as one big bucket or maybe one humongous silo. I have some farm themes going on. Kathy was just on a farm, so I thought I'd tie that in. <laughs> Um, so here's your, your big silo, right? So you could call that your research silo. But more realistically, you need to think about it as separate buckets, separate silos, where research is just one of those. Just like Kathy indicated, there's going to be lots of other things coming up that you're going to have to manage, and they're going to have to be on your to-do list, and you need to figure out how to fit everything in. Um, what all those other buckets or silos are, are really going to depend on your job, right? And maybe the size of the silos and the size of the buckets are going to vary depending on where you are, what the expectations are at your institution. So that's important to keep in mind that it's, just, and Kathy said this too, that it's not going to be the same for everyone. So the five-year plan really has to be your plan, your to-do list. So here are some some buckets or some silos that I have on my list and the way that I break it up. Um, this is just one example. Take it or leave it. So, and the first three are all very close re closely related, right? So thinking about grants, thinking about research, and thinking about publications. So I'm going to define grants as actually writing, getting the grant, getting the money, okay? And research is what you're going to do once you get that money, steps you need to take before you're getting the money, any sorts of projects, more of the kind of, you know, the lab work. That's why I have the, the lab picture there. And then, of course, publications are part of the product, right, what's coming out of the research. But it also cycles in because you need publications to support that you are a researcher in order to apply for funding and show that you have this line of research that you've established and that you'll be able to continue. So those first three really closely related, and that's where I'll go next. And then I have teaching and service you see here at the bottom. Okay, so thinking about research in that broad sense, right, and as you're writing your five-year plan, you're going to want to think of, okay, what's my long-term goal? And there's lots of ways to think of long-term goal. You could think, like, before I die, this is what I want to accomplish, right? And for me, I kind of have that, right? My long-term goal is I'm going to find the most effective and efficient interventions for kids with language impairment, right? Huge, broad goal, right? But within that, I can start narrowing it down, okay? So where am I within that, right? So in the next five years or maybe in the next 10 years, what is it that I want to accomplish towards that goal? Um, and then start thinking about, okay, in order to accomplish that goal, what are the steps that I'm going to need to take? right? Starting to break it down a little bit. And then it's also going to be really important to think, where, where are you going to start? Where are you now? What do you need to have happen? And isn't, is it reasonable to accomplish this goal within five years? Is it really going to take longer? Maybe you could do it in a couple years. So start thinking about, you know, the timeline that's going to work for you. And then thinking about your goals, and everyone's program is going to be different. Like I said, it's going to be a lot of individual needs, preferences. So it might be the case that you have this one long-term goal that you're aiming for, and long-term goal in the sense of like what you want to study in your R01, perhaps something like that. But in order to get to that point, you're going to have several short-term goals that need to be accomplished. Okay. Or maybe it's the case where you actually have two long-term goals, and with each of those, you're going to have multiple short-term goals that you're working on. You know, maybe the scope of each of these long-term goals is a little bit less than in that first scenario. Okay, so start thinking about my research, what I want to do, and how it might fit into these different circumstances. And then also thinking about your goals... This is a slide from Ray Kent from last year that I liked a lot. It was thinking about the different types of projects that you might want to pursue and thinking about ones that, you know, are definitely your will on your way. Um, they're kind of safe bets. You have some funding. They're going to lead directly into your longer-term plan, 
right? So those are going to be your front burner, um, things that you can easily focus on. That being said, don't put everything there. You can also have things on the back burner, those things that really excite you, might have huge benefits, big pay, but you don't want to spend all of your time there because they could be pretty risky. Okay, so start thinking about where you're putting your time. Are you putting it all on this really high-risk thing that if it doesn't pan out, you're going to be, you know, in big trouble? Or um, balancing that somewhat with that front burner, making sure that you're making this steady progress that are going to lead directly to, um, you know, to help fund uh, R01 or whatever the mechanism that you're looking for. And then thinking about your goals, if you have multiple goals, um, long-term goals, or you're thinking about your short-term goals, you could think about your process. Is it going to be something where you need to do study one, then study two, then study three, each of those building on each other that's leading to that, um, the long-term goal, right? Which in many cases, that is the case, where you have to get information from the first study, which is going to lead directly to the second study, and so forth. Or is it the case where you can be working on these three, you know, short-term goals simultaneously, right? Kind of spreading your resources at the same time, and then maybe it'll take longer, across a longer period of time, you'll get the information that you need in order to, um, to reach that long-term goal. Lots and lots of different ways to go about it. The important thing is just to think about what your needs are and what makes the most sense for you. So here's my own little personal example. Um, I don't know if you can see all this, but starting over here. So I have my dissertation study. So my dissertation study was this early efficacy study looking at one treatment approach using novel forms that really can't generalize to anything too useful. But, <laughs> but it was important. It was a very important study. <laughs> And then I did a follow-up study where I was taking that same paradigm, looking to see how kids with typical development um, perform on the task. So I had these two studies, and they served as my preliminary studies for an RO3, right? So I just finished an RO3 where I was looking at um, different treatment approaches um, for, with kids with primary language impairment. But at the same time, while I'm conducting my RO3, I'm also looking at some different approaches that might help with language development. Um, also, conducting surveys to see what current practice are. So I have these you know, three projects going on simultaneously that are going to lead to a bigger pilot study that will feed directly into my R01. So all of this will serve as that preliminary data to go into an R01. Right, so start thinking about your projects, what you have, maybe starting with your dissertation project or you know, your work that you're doing as a postdoc and seeing how all that can feed into your long-term goal and really util utilizing it, building on it to your benefit. But that's all fine and dandy. You can draw these great pictures. You still have to break it down some more, right? It's not like, okay, I'm just going to go do this project, right? There's other steps involved, and a lot of times these steps are going to be just as time-consuming. Right, starting to think about, well, if you have the funding, right? Let's say, okay, yeah, I want to do this study, but I have no money to do it. Well, what are the steps in order to get the money to do it? Do you need to have a pilot study? You know, what do you need? Um, start thinking about the resources. Um, do you need to develop stimuli, protocols, procedures? Start working on that. All of these things can be very time-consuming, and if you don't jump on that immediately, it's going to delay when you can actually do that project. Thinking about IRB, relationships for recruitment, if you're working with special populations especially. Um, do you have necessary personnel, grad students, people to help you with the project? Do you need to train them? What's the timeline of the study? So start thinking about all these pieces and how they're going to fit in that timeline. Um, this is... Um, you know, one way that might help you start thinking about the resources that you might need. This is online. It's a, a Ray Kent had it in his talk, and when I was doing my searches, I came across it too, and I have the website at the end. So um, just different ways to think about the resources that you might need. Okay, so let's, I want to spend a little bit of time thinking about getting that teaching and service bit in too. 
as you're, well, before I go there, I was talking about mapping it out. So when you, you have your long-term goal, you have your short-term goal, you're breaking it down, thinking about all those little steps that you need to accomplish, well, you got to put it on a calendar. Like, when is it going to happen, right? So this is an example of you might have your five years each month plugging in what's going to, your, what are you going to accomplish by that time. Maybe it's when our grants, um, grant applications do, right? That's going to be important to start that. Put those on there and say, okay, what do I need to do in order to make that deadline? Maybe it's putting when you're going to get publications out, things like that. Honestly, looking at this kind of drives me crazy. I don't, it seems a bit overwhelming. But it's important to, to get to these details. This is an example from, I think I did Lessons for Success a few years ago. And, you know, they had their format for doing your, your plan where I wrote out all my projects, started thinking about all the different aspects. So if something like this works for you, by all means, you could use that type of procedure. Um, here's a grid that Ray Kent showed last year. We're breaking it down by semester, right, thinking about each of your semesters, um, what manuscripts you're going to be working on, what data collection, your grant applications, starting to get into some of those other buckets, course preparation, conference submissions. Okay, now I think I'm really getting into the teaching and service. Let's see. Um, this is near the end. So you probably can't see this very well. But this is similar to that last slide that um, Ray Kent had used last year. I have my five-year plan, what, you know, what studies I want to accomplish, start thinking about breaking it down. And then at the beginning of each semester, I fill out a grid like this, where at the top I have each of my buckets. So I have my grant bucket, my writing bucket, which is going to include publications. I also include doing article reviews in my writing bucket because that's my writing time. Um, my teaching bucket, my research bucket, and at the end, my service bucket. So at the end of, or at the beginning of the semester, I think about, okay, what are the big things that I want to accomplish? So I list those at the top. And then at the beginning of each month, I say, okay, what are the things I'm going to accomplish this month? Write those in. And then at the beginning of each week, I start looking, okay, am I dedicating any time towards these things that I said I was going to do that month? So I start listing those out saying, well, this is the amount of time I'm going to spend on that. And then, I, of course, I have to take data on what I actually do. So then I plug in how much time I'm spending on each of the tasks. And then I graph it because that's rewarding to see how much time you're spending on things and get a little sidetracked sometimes. <laughs> um, but I encourage you to think about a system that will help you keep on track, right, to make sure that you're meeting the goals that you want to meet in terms of your research, but then also getting the other things done that you need to get done in terms of teaching and service. So like I said, here are um, some websites where you can find some other good information and some other resources that I encourage you to look at.